So thank you very much for joining us uh, this afternoon. And uh, it seems one hell of a digital week. I think we've got John Carr about to join us as well. Uh, John, are you happy to sit on the end? <laughs> um, so we've, assemb <laughs> we've assembled this particular panel um, to specifically to look at safety in a mobile world because we have to recognize that mobile is part of our broader digital safety society. Uh, what I'd like to do is for each of the panelists briefly to introduce themselves and then we'll just show a quick video and then uh, I'll, I'll give some structure. Uh, but let me just briefly say we, we've got, I think, close to uh, 75 million mobile phones in use in the UK. Uh, we think the nature of digital safety is changing. It's not just about children, but we've done a lot of work in that area. Byron has been a great catalyst to bring us together to talk about this sort of subject uh, as well as to respond as an industry. Uh, but can I just ask each of the panelists to briefly introduce themselves in terms of their role for their organization so you, you know which is the John from the Johnny and so on. Okay, thank you. My, my name's Johnny Ship. I'm the head of content standards and policy for O2. Uh, my big project, I guess, is internet filtering in the UK, uh, but also heavily involved in our uh, child protection approach more generally. Um, uh, my kind of most recent efforts are this little book, Who Wants to Know, which is a, uh, a, a, a book for primary school kids about e-safety that some of you will have uh, seen and I'm happy to go on about for as long as anyone will listen. Um, and also our, our overall um, approach around five key commitments um, to keeping kids safe online. So my expertise is really in the kids area, but I, I think it's a fantastic agenda today which shows that if you, you know, if you take the kids out of it, it, there's still a whole set of really real issues that, are, that, that we need to build on. Yeah. <coughs> I'm uh, John Carr. I'm secretary of something called the Children's Charities Coalition on Internet Safety, which brings together uh, in a single kind of lobbying stroke campaigning body all of the uh, large professional child welfare bodies, NSPCC, Children's Society, Action for Children, that kind of thing. And our, obviously our focus from our title is uh, the internet, but actually it's the, all of the related digital technologies of which increasingly the mobile space is, import, is the most important one. Um, earlier this week, uh, Zoe Hilton and myself, Zoe from the NSPCC, on behalf of CHIS published our digital manifesto, which has 42 recommendations. We've sent that document to all of the major political parties that will be contesting for seats at the next general election in the Westminster Parliament. And uh, the, obviously our main focus is on, the, is on that wider policy agenda. And we have very specific issues around mobile, but that will, we'll come back to them later, I'm sure. Hello, I'm Annie Mullins. I'm uh, head of content standards for Vodafone. I've got a global role, and that's similar to Johnny's in that we kind of develop filters for uh, the internet space uh, and trying to tackle a range of issues that are emerging at the moment and things are changing quite rapidly. I've been very involved with what was called the Home Secretary's Task Force, developing guidance for good practice for the industry. Um, more recently that included the uh, one on social networking and interactive services. Uh, I've also led quite a lot of education initiatives. So an important one we'll be launching in the UK shortly is called Teach Today. And that's going to, that's all the mobile companies almost across Europe with mainstream internet companies and social network companies. And we're putting together obviously important information for teachers, resources, uh, trying to really empower them to understand what's going on in the world because we're seeing quite a lot of incidents of actually children's behavior causing problems, um, particularly for teachers themselves, and a real attempt to try and really get to you know, influence and begin to change behavior about people having to take responsibility for themselves and, and look after others and think carefully about what they're doing because it, it's a fast-changing world with lots of things that we're not going to be able to control. From where I sit, even the mobile phone platform is changing dramatically where you've got other actors like uh, the handset manufacturers, you've got people like Apple with applications. Uh, so the food chain is getting bigger and in some senses, it, you know, many historically people have looked to the mobile operators to really control things and manage it and that's become increasingly more challenging and more difficult and um, at the moment we're very much trying to bring some of the actors together to the table to discuss whether we can agree some principles 
at a global level to try and put things like defaults for information and so forth that help with privacy and, and in, by implication will help with child protection. So there's a lot of activity. I'm involved in a lot of things with many of the people here uh, in different ways and means. I'm Julie Minns. I'm Head of Regulatory and Public Policy at Three, which for those of you who might be less familiar with Three than you might be with, say, Vodafone or O2, we're the uh, newest and smallest mobile network in the UK, but we are the market leader on mobile broadband. My remit at Three is to look after regulatory issues on content and consumer affairs. Um, public affairs, so our interaction with stakeholders like the children's charities and uh, politicians, and also corporate responsibility. So I span that whole breadth of where we might have formal regulatory requirements coming from regulators such as Phone Pay Plus and Ofcom through to where we might need to be uh, on the corporate responsibility agenda. Thank you. Um, finally, I'm Paul Whiting. I'm Chief Executive of Phone Pay Plus. We are the UK regulator for uh, premium rates phone services in the UK. Um, we have a code of practice which is approved by Ofcom and we enforce that against providers of services where that minority of them that do break the code, we then enforce it and with some tough sanctions. I should also mention that a few years ago we set up a subsidiary um, working closely with the mobile operators in the UK called the independent mobile classification body which is there to work with the operators who have put in place some really robust and very very good I think um, age verification processes which they may talk about later and what we do is provide the independent element of that of the, the actual nature of classification so as an independent body outside of the operators and their commercial interests we provide an independent classification that, that providers of services can use in order to rate their content so that it can go behind or not as the case may be age verification procedures or processes so that's what we do and uh, I look forward to the discussion let me just try one or two questions to each of you, if I may, just let me try in reverse order. Paul, because of your involvement in premium rate regulation, this is obviously a consumer protection role as well. To what extent do you feel that you're getting a growing load of activity to do with mobile and the internet and mobile and payment risks, as opposed to perhaps mobile and labeling risks? I think it's certainly the case that what we, we are definitely seeing is as people clearly their behaviours are changing in the UK and, and more people are using mobile, inevitably it raises some more issues for that minority who have a problem on, on mobile. So our complaints about mobile have gone up, but uh, equally what I think is, is really important is although they have gone up, we're now engaging very well I think with the industry about putting in place measures collaboratively to bring those problems down and we're beginning to see a positive outcome there which we'll be talking about a bit more later. But certainly inevitably uh, as mobile is becoming the thing that people use both in terms of their their phone telephony but in terms of their internet access we're seeing more issues and that's that's inevitable but as the market grows as it, it, it surely will it will be a positive thing as well as clearly there'll be some downside negatives and as we have three competitive operators here let me ask a general question to the three of you how easy is it to collaborate on areas of common risk as opposed to competition? So, for example, on location-based services or, or content code. Would you like to go first, Juliet? I think our experience over the last eight years um, has been that it's very easy to collaborate on these issues. There is no competitive advantage to putting at risk mobile consumers. And the mobile operators, I think, much to the surprise of external observers, do work extremely well on issues where there are, uh, where there is potential for harm or there is a risk to the consumer. And that's both for young consumers, but as has been alluded to, increasingly um, our general base, our adult consumers as well. But I think, as Paul's also, also said, there isn't an unwillingness when it comes to issues like financial risk that might arise with regard to premium rate services. There's no reluctance there, again, for the mobile operators to get around the table and talk to the regulator and talk to our competitors to try and come, out, come up with the best solution for our consumers. I think what tends to get overlooked sometimes in the debate is that ultimately it is the mobile operators who stand the most to lose by not taking a collaborative approach because it's our consumers who ultimately get hurt where there are failings. Andy, could you just say a bit more from the international collaboration point of view, how other countries might compare? 
Well, I think the UK has been particularly special, and we've, we've kind of led here more so than anywhere else. I think the other countries very much luck to the UK model because of what was called the Home Secretary's Task Force, which was going since about 2001, where we started to deal with, uh, in the internet space, the chat room issues that were occurring with children. So I think the collaboration and the partnership... ...services, which I appreciate, are not directly in any way the responsibility of the mobile phone networks, but because they're going to work through the mobile phone handsets, and because the mobile phone handsets are very much tied into the individual brands of the mobile phone companies, then uh, it's going to be a challenge that the mobile phone industries and the fixed net industry is going to have to face up to with us. Is that the most significant new risk you face for other, yeah. other internet mobile Well, specifically in the mobile space, I would say that's the big, that's the, that's the sort of, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a graying cloud on the middle, dis, in the middle distance. It's definitely there, it's coming down the track. Um, and in, I mean, although I can see the Daily Mail headlines and, and the tabloid headlines that could easily be assembled around the, the dangers that the, these location services can pose to children, the truth is the issue that these new, this new breed of location services raises is about the kind of society we're becoming, that the extent to which uh, surveillance technologies, intrusive, highly intrusive potentially, uh, surveillance technologies are going to be given uh, a, an unfettered reign. Um, and it, because they work through the mobile phone handset, inevitably the mobile phone industry is going to be right in the middle of this. But it's not just the children's organizations who are going to be concerned about this. It's the civil liberties people, it's the privacy people, it's the data protection people. There's a whole heap of interests that are going to get energized and active around this and unfortunately you guys in the mobile phone industry in a, even though it's not directly your fault absolutely I accept that you are going to be right in the middle of it and it's not obvious to me yet how and when that's all going to pan out Well, I think it's an ongoing set of issues that's going every time the, the net mutates or changes or access or communication technologies are shifting and moving, then we're facing greater challenges, in particular with privacy as more people come online, there's more opportunity to share your personal data, how that may be used, misused. All of that, I think, is going to remain quite challenging for us. I think the good thing is that the work that we've been doing over the last eight to ten years as businesses, as industries, working with people like John and uh, the regulators is that we, we're in a good position to try and address it before we start to see, you know, mega, or, you know, very bad incidences occurring. And I think we are genuinely having good discussions. We are getting around the table as uh, the different industries from the handset manufacturers to the, mo to the mobile companies to the social networking or internet companies because it is going to take all of us to play our part to be able to provide the kind of privacy protection and we've got to try and work at some sort of agreements together about what we expect of each other, what we expect the consumer experience to be. I think we've got a big challenge because the world is going to require more people to take more responsibility for themselves and I think we have a huge job in terms of education and I think that lies also with regulators and the governments that you know if this is a very valuable asset for our society and the new information economy then we've got to skill people and we've got to protect people so I think We've all got a part to play, really. Julie, Julie, if you could take the microphone now. I'll throw it open for a few more questions in a minute, but just two more supplementary ones here. Are you seeing from the data services that three offer a rise in customer care complaints associated with the Internet, and are these characterized by any sort of mega trends that you're able to share with the audience, or is it business as usual? I mean, I think at the moment it's largely business as usual. Um, I mean, our role there is very much as a connection point out to the internet for customers. And whilst we'll make advice available to them on staying safe online, as Annie says, it is increasingly an issue of personal safety. I think the other thing I'd say is, particularly given this session's about mobile safety, we're talking from the perspective of mobile operators, but we're not the only 
mobile device that's out there that's allowing people to go online. Increasingly, you have handheld devices that are using Wi-Fi. Um, and whilst we can give as much advice to our customers as possible because we have that direct relationship with them, if I'm using Wi-Fi on a handheld device, I'm not sure who owns that customer relationship. It's, it's ill-defined, isn't it? <laughs> can we just go, last question, to payments to you, Paul? Um, Clearly, with the evolution of payments in the internet, the definition of premium rate around a number range is going to be very blurred. Are you going to now start to get complaints around different payment mechanisms? And, and if so, how will you handle some of the enforcement arrangements? We heard about Visa earlier on briefly. Uh, in some markets, they do mobile money transfers. So financial services and mobile transactions are going to grow. How do we handle the enforcement evolution in this Darwinian world? Uh, with great difficulty, I think, is the answer. I, I think that it's incumbent upon all of us, that's industry, regulators, and all of those concerned, in this world where when something happens, what's the path, uh, the escalation path, for, for, for the consumer in terms of where they go when they've got the problem? We already do get some people who come to us with a problem that isn't for us to deal with, and we then have to refer them on, which causes a frustration, but we, know that we, we need to know where to refer people. So I think the world is going to become more complex as this unravels and different payment institutions and methods are right, as they surely will. And I think it will be just incumbent upon us to work out how we best educate and signpost people to the right place, to get them to the right place, so that their problem can be resolved without just keep sending them around the houses time and time again, which no one will thank us or indeed you know, industry for. So therefore you would work with Ofcom and the other relevant regulators to minimise the risk and try and stamp out bad practice maybe with the Office of Fair Trading and people like that? Uh, we're talking to the Office of Fair Trading now. We're, we're working up a new uh, memorandum of understanding with them because we see, and it's in this week's Digital Britain report, they, they are likely to take more responsibility in online world for purchasing. Well, they will look to us to do our piece when it comes to premium rate, but that won't be the only piece. And if it is indeed, it, I suspect it will be a small piece. Um, there'll be other organisations. There could be the FSA involved. So there's going to be a host of regulators. So I see on our, our work schedule, for the next year or so is building those relationships with all sorts of bodies and organisations so that we've got a clear path to help people when they've got a problem. And for all these scams, are we working at internet speed, Paul, or do we need to kind of optimise it and productionise it a little bit? We certainly need to optimise it. it it's, we're not working as fast as some of the, these internet people are working at. Um, and I think one of the challenges we all face there is that that's a global problem, not just a UK problem. And that raises real challenges about how we share information across boundaries, which, frankly, I think we're quite good at, but we're not as good as we need to be at. And I think no, no other country is better yet. So there's a lot of work to be done, and we need to get better. Okay. So are there any questions from the floor you'd like to ask? We've got a, a big panel of experts. There's a lady on the far left. I can't quite see where you are, but there's a microphone coming to you. <laughs> if you could indicate where you are. Is it Charlotte Ainsley? Hi, I'm Daphne, actually, from Visa. I just wanted to um, make a comment, um, which some of you may or may not be aware of, but we are actually already working together, the payment systems um, and the mobile industry, to develop some best practice guidelines about how we develop the payment mechanism that is integrated into the phone. Um, and you're quite rightly pointing out all the complexities around it, but I think absolutely the industries you know, are showing willing in, and trying to figure out how, how to make it as safe as possible and still give the consumers what they want, which is a really effective, flexible way of um, going about their lives. Uh, and you're referring in particular to the GSM Association visa activity and maybe some other Ac activities? Yes, exactly. So that's all the GSM exactly. operators working together with yes. visa internationally. So yeah. we can look at this not just on a UK basis, but on an international But globally, basis. indeed. Thanks, Thanks for the addition. So I could recognize you at a distance. And, and a question at the back, far right, if the microphone can come to you. Uh, I run a company that supplies uh, software for, to educate kids about e-safety. We have an installed base of 20,000 schools um, in the UK and Australia. Um, one of the interesting things uh, we find in our practice is that um, as the new generation of mobile devices happen, the, the installed base of bandwidth in the average school playground is now around 10 times, I'm talking about high schools, is about 10 times the bandwidth going into the walled garden in that school. And in some countries, including the UK, and to some extent in Australia, the head teachers still have a, have a legal responsibility 
for what those devices are actually um, doing in that playground and indeed outside of the playground. Yet what I find curious about um, uh, discussions like today is there doesn't seem to be any discussion of the interface between the responsibilities of the carriers and the, resp and the legal responsibilities of the head teachers and of the child protection people. And uh, this is a problem, it seems to me, that didn't exist when you only had fixed point uh, internet services and it becomes a real problem when you have um, you know, three or four megabit going into every handheld phone in throughout a school playground. So, so could we ask John to say a little bit about what the uh, UK Child Council for Internet Safety is doing about awareness and then maybe ask one of the operators to say how they're supporting that, if I may. John, you, do you want to talk about the awareness group? Um, yeah, there's a lot of activity in the pipeline. Uh, the new UK, UKIS body, and I, I'm a member of the executive board of it, uh, it's only really just getting into gear following the, you know, the, all of the shenanigans after the Byron report was published and so on. But mm -hmm. there are substantial sums of uh, money, I think it's nine, nine million pounds, I think, in the end, mm -hmm. going to be made available for internet safety awareness activities and, and related activities that's going to be coming out and hitting the streets. I doubt that it will address the specific point that the, the gentleman at the back raised about the legal responsibilities of head teachers in quite the way that you raised it, but to the extent that it's contributing to increasing awareness, and certainly schools are a major target, target audience, it, it should certainly help. I think we should look at the legal one separately, but maybe Annie could just say a little bit about schools liaison or one of the well, other operators. I mean, I've already announced we're doing the Teach Today site, www.teachtoday.eu, which will be launched, the, the new version, in, in early July, because, you know, there are lots of issues with schools and devices. Uh, the classic has been to try and ban, you know, take off and restrict and confiscate mobile phones when you go into school. I think there's a, a lot of opinion about that, that actually that's not very helpful, that maybe we should be embracing them because of the additional educational opportunities, that this is the world they're in, they've got to manage it. I mean, I've seen it from all sorts of angles, from teacher unions jumping up and down because teachers are losing their jobs, particularly young teachers, some of them, because they're bringing themselves into disrepute by putting postings up on uh, Facebook and the children finding them and exposing them to teachers using their own personal equipment in schools and the responsibilities for where are the policies, where are the management in schools that are helping look after that. But we've got, I think, again, the UK is pretty much leading with, you saw, Bechter, which has just... Uh, produce some professional guidance for teachers about those very issues, which I think is a, a you know, wonderful step because I can't see anywhere else in the world that has done it. And I'm looking around all the time at these issues. So, you know, we'll be certainly highlighting that. They've got brought out cyberbullying guidance. I mean, I think the bullying amongst children is a huge issue in schools. I think, I suspect the technology just amplifies what's already the existing behavior. Some of it we don't like to see. It's been hidden, it's very difficult. There's a temptation to put a lot of responsibility to the technology for these issues when it's in fact human behavior that we need to affect change in. So I think the things like we've done with Teach Today is to actually you know, help people put the information and stuff to their fingertips, including head teachers with the professional guidance, with you know, the kinds of places, they can, it's a one-stop shop for help. If you, want any, if you need help for Facebook or MySpace, you need to get a video taken down of you on YouTube as a teacher, which is the sort of things kids are doing, then you can get the help and resource you in one place rather than having to stagger yourself across mobile operators, um, social networking companies, and that's why we've all come together. Um, you know, we're going to keep the site updated with the latest information. There's a lot of talk about sexting at the moment. I think the US has coined the phrase sexting, uh, with young people who are taking <laughs> illicit photographs or videos of themselves uh, or falling out with boyfriends and girlfriends. I mean, huge amounts hits the playground and, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a set of responsibilities across the whole school network, from what I can see, to, all, to also the parents having to engage. So there's a vast amount of work to do, really, trying to help everybody take their role and take the piece of responsibility that they need to, including the children. And the fact is that we've been working at this together in different ways for 10 years or more, Home Office yeah. Task Force and more recently the UK CCS being formed as a result of the Byron Report. So we'll need to do more. But the handheld learning side, so the ability to use these devices in schools, we're actually getting more and more demands for both trials and 
examples of e-books and e-libraries and virtual readers. So we are going to have to do more in this area anyway to satisfy both the demand as well as some of the risks. Was there another question over there in the middle I saw? Yes. Uh, last week there was a lot of publicity about something which is almost a directory inquiry service for mobiles. And it's not quite a directory inquiry service because otherwise they'd be caught by all sorts of legislation. Uh, do you think uh, there's a safety issue associated with that? Um, well, yes, but let me ask Julia, do you want to go? For, so go on. I, I think we've all got our own responses, which are pretty similar, but Julia, if you wouldn't mind going first. I, th I think our responses are all pretty similar. Um, certainly from Three's perspective, we have not given any data to that particular directory at all. Um, and um, I think we're looking at how we can advise our customers if at all, on how they can opt out. Um, I did it just in the last couple of days, just making sure my details aren't on that directory. So we um, can't ring you anymore? <laughs> you, can't, you can't find me now on the directory. I don't think I was on that. But um, I, we have not given over that data. It's one of those things that gets slightly misreported in the media. I think some media outlets were saying that this was data that had been handed over directly from the mobile operators. And certainly from a three perspective, that's not true. I don't believe it's true of any of the operators at all. C can we bring the microphone to Paul? Because I think Paul's got regulatory responsibility for directories, really. That is absolutely true. And we got a lot of inquiries very quickly last week when it hit the news, which I think tells us all something about the privacy concerns around people and their mobile phone numbers. Um, but the specific issue, which in all cases was being raised, was one around data protection. And it's there that we've, we've referred that issue to the Information Commission, because we think they are the best place to deal with that specific issue. And they have already issued some public statements about that. Um, we will deal with the issue in terms of other concerns, should they arise about that service operating as a direct inquiry service which is caught under our code of practice should they arise as and when the service launches I'm not expecting them to but if they do we will regulate that and we will work with other regulators like the Information Commissioner if the concern or complaint is about one to do with privacy uh, and equally I think I could speak for all the operators that we've done similar action to Julie rather than repeating it all along the line is there another another question no can I just ask John one quick question before we have a wrap-up comment from each of you John, which of the new items in this week's digital um, mission, manifesto that you've yeah. launched, or in the Digital Britain report that's been also launched this week, do you think are going to take us forward most in safety terms? Um, well, obviously, in, in, in general terms, the, the stuff the government's promising to do in relation to education awareness and increased media literacy, that's very much in in vogue and, 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 and uh, is going to get a lot of attention, a lot of resources. I mean, we, we've got a, uh, apart from the location thing that I mentioned, uh, in relation to child abuse images, uh, it's quite clear now that more and more of that traffic is shifting away from the web because we've been quite relatively successful, relatively successful, uh, in, in, in dealing with it on the web. And it's moving towards peer-to-peer -to -peer networks on an even larger scale uh, than before. So we want to turn our attention more to dealing with peer-to-peer -peer networks. Now that got an oblique reference in the, well, it got a very direct reference in, in the Digital Britain report, but that was in relation to copyright material rather than to illegal material. And we want to try to make sure that in what, whatever's going to happen next in relation to peer-to-peer, -to -peer, that its role as a distributor, large-scale distributor of illegal child abuse images is not lost sight of. Great. So last question for, for you all. All right. Christmas is coming. I know it's getting warmer out there, but Christmas is coming. And I'm Father Christmas. And in six months' time, under your Christmas tree, you have a wish. And I'd like to know what you would like to put that wish on to improve the world of digital safety, either from your personal point of view or your company's point of view, or even something that you think you've got in train that you can share with us today. Johnny, do you want to go first? Um, well, well I, yeah, I'll try and r wrap up a few things. I mean, I, I, what I would like is to get clearer about how we're going to deal with this, um, the international cooperation that we need to do to uh, step up uh, to internet governance issues. Um, I, I just, I, the, the other thing is that I think we need to, you know, we've done a great job on the education, and John just said education is vogue and stuff, but I, I think we also need to, start to uh, perhaps as individual companies certainly as O2 we need to we need to uh, 
not lose sight of the fact that we're a technology uh, company and we need to be coming up with technical solutions where it's relevant. And, uh, and I think the, the, the answer to the education uh, 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 kind of uh, challenge is possibly partly technical and we need to be, we need, you know, we need more, more work on that. Sounds like a new toolkit under your Christmas tree, but there we go. All right, Something John. Like <laughs> um, I think I would definitely like to see this question of how we're going to tackle the emergence of the new breed of location uh, based services that don't depend on data from the mobile phone networks but can be obtained via Wi-Fi hotspots, open cell ID uh, and so on which have nothing at all to do with you as a satellite, GPS, all of those things which are not in any way dependent upon or not substantially or significantly dependent upon you as mo mobile phone operators. I would like to see that resolved. I also think um, in, uh, the on online sale of knives online sale of alcohol and online sale of a, a whole range of age-restricted products and services is something that needs, has to be resolved. We've done it for gambling very successfully. We now need to make sure it's done in relation to a range of other products and services. Annie? I think for me, because of the work I'm doing and the focus I've got, it has to remain at people like parents and teachers having a real sense of understanding their, the important role they, need, they have in engaging in this so that it becomes less of a, a digital safety issue but more of a parenting issue and a teaching issue and that there's a balanced perspective about the opportunities that are, exist in the new world of being online. If you look at the, the digital Britain report, I think you know, there's a big push there to get more people engaged and with that comes more responsibility about helping people manage themselves, uh, both adults and children, particularly with their privacy, with the information that they're giving out. So you know, I think Santa Claus needs to really help people with that aspect of managing their own, and understanding the importance of their own value of, of date, personal information. Um, I think my wish would be that when we debate issues of digital safety, we debate the issues and not the platform or the medium. Um, and too often I think the debate tends to focus on the access mechanism and not the issue itself. And that somewhat clouds the debate and I think at times prevents people from getting to solutions. There's nothing new, as we've heard a couple of times today, there's nothing new about those activities, about those threats that happen online or on mobile um, and I think we forget that and we start looking at what we can do for mobile or what an ISP could do rather than looking at the issue and what the solution is so my wish would be let's have a little bit more clarity about the debate. Paul? I think mine would be to um, use education to, to build greater trust and to, and to have more collaboration with some industry around how we could do that in a combined way so that they're joint messages rather than individual and different messages. Thanks very much, Paul. I think I saw a last hand. If it's a quick question, go for it, but just pose it to one person, will you? Thank you. Oh, um, what do you think about France banning mobile phones in schools? Silly and it won't work. Well, the answer was silly and it won't work from John. <laughs> the question was about banning mobile phones in schools. Would anyone like to add just one other quick comment to that? I mean, I think it's a backward step, frankly, and I just don't believe it, it makes sense based on the logic of the scientific evidence that's been around for years. Um, actually, it seems to be taking things backwards. So unless there are any more questions, could you please put your hands together for a very open panel? Thank you very much. <laughs>